My name is Laurie Santos. I teach psychology at Yale University, and today I want to talk to you about the G.I. Joe fallacy. This lecture is in the series on cognitive biases. If you've watched a bunch of these videos, you've probably gotten a bit better at noticing your biases at work and knowing that you might fall prey to them. You might also think that knowing about your biases would, naturally, make you less susceptible to them. Unfortunately, it's not always that simple. In fact, if you think knowing your biases is all you need to overcome them, then you'd be falling prey to yet another bias, the G.I. Joe fallacy. If you're a child of the 1980s, then you might have a guess about where the name from this bias comes from. Yes, it's from that cartoon known as G.I. Joe. Maybe you remember how these shows ended. Each episode had a sort of cheesy public service announcement that ended with the show's famous epithet. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. The problem with this idea, the idea that knowing is half the battle, is that cognitive science has shown us that merely knowing about our biases is often way less than half the battle. Now, there are certainly some cases where knowing is half the battle, knowing your multiplication tables, for example, or knowing which aisle the milk is in, but there are many more where it's not the case, cases where just knowing something doesn't really help us all that much. For example, you may know that standing on the Grand Canyon skywalk is perfectly safe, but your mind will still feel like it's pretty scary. You may know that arbitrary anchors can mess up your final judgment, but you'll still feel like it's best to get five chocolates when you see a five for five dollars sign. Finally, you may know that different wordings can affect your intuitions, but you still may be more hesitant to take a risk involving lives lost than lives saved. Years and years of research on cognitive biases has shown that knowing or recognizing yourself as having information is only a small part of what controls our behavior. In day-to-day -day situations, most of our behavioral control comes from other processes like our habits or the situations we find ourselves in and not from our conscious selves. This is why shaping our situations to nudge our behavior in the right direction or even just learning to regulate your emotions over time can be really powerful. The funniest part of the G.I. Joe fallacy is that even knowing about it, as the fallacy would predict, is less than half the battle. Even if you know that knowing is less than half the battle, you still have a tendency to think that what you consciously know is the main thing that controls your behavior. But it's not. Even if you've watched all of these videos, you're still going to be subject to the same effects that the videos describe. For most cognitive biases, including the G.I. Joe fallacy, knowing is not even half the battle. And so now you know, and that's less than half the battle.